streaming. You guys know I don't usually text back while I'm streaming. Like we have uh, Alaska texted me twice while we've been streaming, and he knows that I stream in the evenings, and he doesn't watch stream. Um, so he knows like if I don't message him back, it's because I'm streaming, and I'll message him back tomorrow probably. And he's fine with that. He never pushes me to be like, oh, what were you doing? Were you streaming? Yeah, but some one guy, I didn't mess in, message him back. Oh, it was radio guy. I didn't message him back for like half a day. And he's like, is something wrong? Are you okay? Like, why didn't you message me back? I was like, I was like out doing something. He's like, oh, well, you know, I just figured we were past that point. And at this point, like, like you would reply more promptly or something like that. And I was like, oh. Oh, did I not tell you? I'm a shitty texter. Like, I'm fucking gore. Not as bad as Lin J. She takes up to three days to message back one of her best friends. She's way worse than me. But even I am a very bad texter. Sometimes I take a long time. Twitch police have been alerted. People are watching stream naked. Thank you, Barry, for that. Hi, Dan. Welcome in. How are you? Victor says, uh, there is. I will gladly search it up for you. Uh, it's hard to find in PDF format only, I think. Okay, cool. I'm down to make Warhammer some Warhammer food. <laughs> <laughs> not notifying the purple badge police thank you the internet would break if poison ivy streamed with you yeah actually if artemis came on stream you guys would lose your shit you guys yeah you would lose your shit if you met artemis she's the one that i don't think we're going to date i don't know i'm getting mixed signals from her um but we are going to hang out we have plans to hang out like three times in the next month and a half like we've already gotten them on the calendar so i don't know what the plan is with artemis but if you saw her you would like chat we would break the internet if you guys saw artemis poison ivy is really really sweet she's just very very shy artemis is basically the blonde version of me crossed with lin jay yeah lin jay's actually met her before but i i think yeah, if Lin Che and I got together and we were blonde, that's Artemis. She's a firecracker. She would break the internet. She would break all of Twitch. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I don't like people contacting me every day. Yeah, I don't like it unless they make it funny. Ooh, dating. I heard Warhammer and perked up. Yes, yes. This is, we're talking about, so all of my um, people I'm dating have nicknames. Originally, it was to protect their privacy. Half of them have been on stream now, so like, whatever. You guys know Cat Guy's name is Ryan. Y'all know Alaska's name is Kagan. Like, they're fine with you guys knowing their name. I, but also, it kind of, it's hard to remember which one's which. But, you know, Alaska's one with the giant Alaska sleeve on his arm. Cat Guy obviously brought his cat on stream. Poison Ivy looks like Poison Ivy. And Warhammer, I mean, when you see him, you'll be like, oh yeah, his name makes sense. The dude is a fucking beast. He's huge. So yes, Warhammer looks like he would be nicknamed Warhammer. He'll be on, I, he's probably gonna be on stream in the next couple of weeks. Um, don't like people doing that every day. Geekboy, what do I spy with my little eye? It's Kathy, what's up Geekboy, how are you doing? Welcome in, good to see you. Uh, I also like this, I mean, I don't like to pit them against each other. I actually talked to one of them about it and he's like, are we all like on the same footing? I was like, yeah, you guys are all on the same footing. That doesn't necessarily mean that I see all of them the same amount because I don't get to see Warhammer as much because our schedules don't line up, but that doesn't mean I don't value his friendship as much as the others. Like, but yes, they're all equal footing. Uh, but I do like to hear chat chat's feedback. And so Vendetta said, I think Alaska is number one on my list. Yeah, I think a lot of, well, some people are voting I think everyone says Poison Ivy is their favorite. Even Supper, oh, that's the other thing. Supper Club, anyone who doesn't know, I host a Supper Club with my friends every, every week for seven years. And the guys at Supper Club are kind of overprotective. And so they don't like it when I bring dates to Supper Club because it's a very tight knit group of friends that have known each other for a very long time. And yeah, they're like not comfortable with me bringing, um, dates over and then I was like well can I bring poison ivy and they're like oh yeah you can bring her and I was like that's a fucking double standard and we talked about it talked about it and now they're like supper club has also changed their tune and they're like actually no we want to meet them all and so now upcoming supper clubs all of my IRL close friends from like middle school and high school they apparently want to meet each one of them as well and they're going to do the same thing they're going to give me their feedback on all of them uh but yeah some, some people are rooting for Cat Guy. Some people are rooting for Alaska. Everyone's rooting for Poison Ivy. And then you guys are going to meet Warhammer and he's going to break the whole skew. Like everything's going to be all tossed up once you guys meet Warhammer. I hate messaging like email says dad. Uh, it, 
It might take me a few days, uh, too busy doing all the things I have to been doing uh, in, in life before you. Exactly, exactly. And so when some people get a little too pushy, it's like, you do know I'm a single mom with two special needs kids. Like you are at the bottom fucking list of my priorities, which is good because actually two of the guys, so uh, Warhammer and Alaska were both raised by single moms. And I think that's why they have so much patience with me and are never, uh, cat guy is also very patient and not pushy, but specifically those two Warhammer in Alaska, I think it's because they were raised by single moms, which I think is really, and that's also why they're really cool. Like around my kids and stuff like that. It's really fucking sweet. Um, she messaging. Yeah. There's a lot of other priorities I have. I got work. I got kids. I got stream. A lot of stuff was here before these guys were here. So luckily they're pretty patient. Shots fired, lols. Uh, I love daily texts, even if uh, they're nothing super meaningful, but it's not for everyone. Yet some people like it. There's a lot of people who like it. I think I'm the only one who, one of the only people who doesn't like it. My biggest red flag is when it's the good morning text and all they text you is good morning, gorgeous. Every fucking morning at 8 a.m. For some reason, it seems, um, it seems routine and obligatory as opposed to, I would rather have less interaction and have it be more meaningful than ever be in a, I don't like routine, especially when it comes romantically. I'm not very big on, I used to be the person who was like on the phone and say, okay, I love you. Bye. And it became just a new jerk thing. So I don't do that anymore. Uh, but yeah, teach their own. Again, everyone's different. You got to find what works for you. Luckily I am finding what works for me. Um, and I encourage everyone to do the same thing. That's what you, that's why I don't need, uh, that's why I don't need to contact me every day. Yep, there you go. Uh, can we get a Kathy Poison Ivy Lin J stream with alcohol? Could be entertaining. This is why, this is why she's not coming on stream, y'all. Y'all would enjoy it too much if she were here. She, okay, so Poison Ivy is coming to Supper Club, though. She's actually one of the first ones coming to Supper Club. No, she's the first ever. I think Poison Ivy will be the first person I've ever dated that has come to supper club besides my ex. Uh, and I told them, oh, well, the girl I'm dating, she's vegan. And they're like, and it was weird. They all at the same time were like, we could do a vegan night. And the, the other girls at supper club were like, yeah, bring her over. We'll do a vegan night. And I think supper club, they love cooking challenges. I, all of them were excited. Like, oh, this will be a fun challenge. We've never had a vegan night before. We've never had a reason to have a vegan night. So I actually didn't invite Poison Ivy to Supper Club. Supper Club invited her. And then they enthusiastically said, we'll just have a themed night and we'll, we'll all cook vegan food. And then I told Poison Ivy that. And she like was just grinning ear to ear and turned all pink and blushing. It was adorable. So yeah, Poison Ivy is coming to Supper Club. We'll see how that goes. And then if she's comfortable, of course, I'll invite her on stream, but I'm not going to push her at all. Uh, uh, the food, oh, Lin J's food from yesterday made you so hungry. Mm, mm, mm. Me thinks entertaining would be an understatement. Uh, Poison Ivy, when she drinks, is not like that. She doesn't get crazy. Like Lin J and I, when we drink, we, we get amped up. But Poison Ivy is actually pretty... She gets, she get, okay, fair enough. She gets handsy. She, she gets, she gets very lovey and friendly, uh, but she doesn't go crazy. She's pretty chill drunk. Uh, welcome. You know, I would have fed you. Yeah. I don't understand. Good morning. Text either says, uh, Ida dads, folks who want needed that are non-starter are a non-starter. Yeah. So for me, I thought it was controlling to have someone text you every morning, first thing in the morning. And my thought for it was, or my friend Jenny was explaining this to me. She said, the, not for everyone, not some people just are really romantic. I'm not a very romantic person, but the way I see it, when at least what happens to me, I think it's a very controlling thing because they want to be the first thing you think of every morning. Like they want to be how you start off your day. So your day is kind of colored with that tint, you know, like the first thing you thought of that morning and that's kind of the headspace you're in for the rest of the day. I mean, you can change throughout the day, but for me, whenever someone texts first thing in the morning, it's very, it seems possessive to me and I don't like it. That's just me, that's just me. And I, I usually, I tell anyone I'm dating, like I'm not that girl that you need to text every day. If I don't hear from you for 24 to 48 hours, I, that's fine. But usually if you really like someone and you have a good banter, like for me, I can only date, we talked about this yesterday, I can only date someone who has a similar sense of humor and has a really good sense of humor. Wash your sister sauce. Um, I had to break up or I had to chuck 
I think like four guys recently, all of them, the red flag was they didn't make me laugh within three days to a week of chatting. I didn't laugh at all. Like, dude, if you're dating someone, you have to be able to laugh because especially if you like eventually get it on, shit slips, your body makes weird noises, like all sorts of, like sometimes you're like in the process of getting stuff set up and you're like sitting, you got like some downtime. Like you gotta be able to crack jokes and like have fun and laugh and stuff. Uh, so I can't date someone who doesn't have a sense of humor. And if they have a good sense of humor, then most likely they will be messaging me at least once a day, usually to send me something funny and make me laugh, which I adore. Yeah, I was seeing now I would have asked them uh, what they wanted for breakfast. I also can't cook very well. Uh, also, we live together, so we don't need to text each other and all that. Yeah. I mean, that's more for like, yeah, if you live together, you're not dating. Well, I mean, you are still dating, but it's a little bit different than courting. I guess right now we're still in the courtship process. Also, fun thing, I have I have made it clear to all of them, they will never be moving into my house. Like, that's my problem why I, I jumped off Hinge. Hinge, everyone kept looking to settle down and like nest together and I was like no dude I I love my space I love my independence I love my freedom and multiple Lin J knows a couple of them too M multiple guys were just like yeah and then you know someday like I could sell my condo and like because I mean I have extra space here but it's like I like my extra space but no I made it very clear to everyone we could be fucking 80 years old and I will still be in my house and you will still be in your house I like my space I can, I can adore you. I could even grow to love you and have our lives mix and mingle together. That don't fucking mean I'm gonna share a closet with you again. Mm -mm. Nope. None of these guys will be the stepfather to my kids. None of them I will marry and none of them are moving in. This is purely just like, we enjoy each other's company. We're really good friends. And then we'll figure out the rest, but like, none of them are moving in. God, so many guys have asked to move in. Like, jokingly, like, oh, yeah, and if it move, works out, then, like, we could, like, settle down. No, no, you can't move in. Handy, that's a good trade and partner. Ah, LTL agree. I do, I do enjoy the handsy partners. Um, I'm not really good at cuddling. No, I'm getting better at cuddling. Historically, I'm, a, I'm not a cuddler. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning how to cuddle. It's a slow process for me. Uh, well, I made friends with most of the bar while I was drinking in San Diego. I do not. I've seen you. Yes. Lin J at the bar top will make friends with everyone at the bar top, plus all the bartenders. My date thought it was amazing. That's that you are amazing. Lin J is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. She is uh, like, she's magnetic. Like everyone is just drawn to her. Exactly. Which is why I say Lin J and Artemis, very similar personalities. Uh, I'm a romance sap. I love romance. I have been told multiple times, Harmony, that the number one complaint I get is that I'm detached, unromantic, and guarded. Like, like just recently, I won't mention which one, actually, just recently, two of the three guys have complained about that. Not in a mean way, but they did say, like, they, they wish I would spend more time with them, or they wish I would, like message more yeah i've got I've, I've gotten multiple complaints already that i need to put more effort into my relationships so that's why we chucked all the other ones is because the three that we have four we want to make sure that like we're actually exploring those and working on building them up because like i mean i've never gotten into a fight with any of them but eventually like if you're in a relationship with someone you're eventually gonna like have some sort of disagreement and then you your relationship makes it past that or it doesn't who knows there's a lot of stuff to still figure out, um, but I think, I think I'm going to just focus on what I have and explore those, and we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, two of them have complained so far that I'm not, I'm not being romantic enough, so. Message received. I'll work on it. Um, and I do care about them, and I do want to make them feel appreciated, so I, I legit am genuinely going to try to be more thoughtful. Uh, you know, that's a huge observation. What's up, Camille? How are you doing? Welcome in. Uh, LT says that's a huge observation. The possessive part could be in part because the morning texter needs their partner to reassure them that they are stable in relationship because they aren't confident about it. LT, couldn't have fucking said it better myself. That is, that is why, because if the morning texter doesn't get a morning response, then their fucking day is ruined. Can't confirm. I've seen this happen enough times. So... Yeah, so actually, really funny thing. One of the morning texters, the one that Lin Jay and I don't really like, uh, we both knew him, he, he was the motherfucker 
who told, who asked me to read the book Attached, which I hate that book, by the way. And the my interpretation of that book is someone who is their attachment style is a insecure type wrote that book to justify being insecure attachment style. And so every guy who's asked me to read that book, and there have been three gentlemen who have asked me to read that attached book, all three of them were insecure attachment styles and told me I was detached or unattached or whatever it's called. I was like, yeah, I fucking, I could have told you that. And uh, they thought by me reading the book, somehow it'd be like different. Nope, I just got annoyed and pissed. But yes, I, I don't, I don't deal well with insecure people. Dating me, if you're insecure, oh, that's not a good combination. I am, <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Uh, Willie, what's up, Wazzle? So, uh, so I have to buy a house next door or right down the street. It doesn't have to be next door. I like the idea of what, if we're old, my partner living on a, like a lake and we can just paddleboard to each other. I think that'd be adorable. Or we can get like one of those paddle boats. Yeah. Being close would be nice. Yeah. A uh, huge observation. I don't think the good morning thing is necessarily weird, but I agree it's not for everyone. It's not weird. It's just not for me, for my specific reasons. It's just a boundary that needs to be set early. Exactly. Uh, it's weird if, wait, needs to be set early if it weirds you out. So it's a good thing uh, to set things up. Vendetta, 100% agree, which is why it is one of the first things I say when I start dating someone is like, I, and they all know I don't like clingy. I don't like possessive. I don't like jealousy. I make it very, very, very clear from the beginning. Um, that is like, yeah, I have to say, one thing I've learned a lot over the past year that I'm very proud of is I'm extremely fucking good at communicating my boundaries now. I historically have been horrible about that. Thank you, therapy. But now I'm at like one of my strengths in a relationship is I'm very good at speaking up for myself, for advocating my boundaries. And there's no guesswork on how I feel. I will fucking tell you how I feel. I'm getting so much better at it. Um, but yes, I told all of them that, uh, me and my partners move in together. And then we all, when they looked at each other and said, let's be together, here we go. Guessing you're not much for okay Cupid either. That's, uh, all escalator folks. What's eat it dads. What's escalator folks. Is that the people who just want to like escalate up into a relationship? Yeah, no, I started in okay Cupid a long time ago. That's how I met my, um, my ex, the father of my children. Uh, we met on okay Cupid, but no, 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 okay Cupid, no bumble no hinge none of that stuff tinder tinder bust man tinder tends to be the um the chill one there is another app that um is for people who are casually dating uh but that one's really scary if you're a girl so i try not to go on that one too often uh have to buy the house next door yeah i like my space and i i like my space too says vendetta and i'm never getting married either yeah People are like, are you sure? What if you met the right one? One, I don't even think I believe in such thing as the right one anymore. My ex was a great guy. I still think he's a great guy. I just don't think that whole lifestyle is for me anymore. But yeah, so it's not for everyone. Uh, Nia says, I dated girls that text me first thing in the morning, all through the day, last thing at night. If they woke up in the middle of the night, it was too much. I got work and things to do. Yeah, some people come on really strong. As long as you tell them that, you know, it's a little too much. I mean, you would think that the person cares about you and they'd be like, okay, that's your boundary. You need a little bit more breathing room and they should respect that. If they get all like insecure and clingy on you, then you chuck them and you move on and get someone who has their shit together. Uh, Camille says, I haven't seen you in a long time. You were married before. I hope you, you've been well. Yes, exclamation point, amicable. Uh, yes, I have been single since last summer. It's almost been exactly one year and yeah, it's going great. I'm still co-parenting with my ex very well. He lives like less than a mile away. Yep. Yeah. All in all, still good. I, again, very laid back personality. <laughs> uh, haven't heard the term escalator, folks. I have not heard that one before. Camille also likes her space. Barry says, if one of the finalists builds a house with their bare hands next to yours, are they a keeper? Well, I mean, they don't have to do that to be a keeper. I can still keep them with them without them having to do all the notebook on me. Uh, though if they can build a whole house, that's definitely something that's... Uh, yeah, that's some long-term commitment right there. Uh, Edith, that says, like, they want to get on an escalator with you from nothing to be really enmeshed instead of, like, a more lateral development. Okay, yeah, I, I get that. They're the whoosh. 
Uh, yeah, that's definitely, definitely not for me. The ongoing joke, which is not really a joke, but while I was on Hinge, I think I went four dates in a row and all of them made the same damn joke, which like we would talk about stuff. And within like a couple hours of the first date, they'd be like, so like, should I just go buy the ring now? And I was like, you don't fucking make that joke to a divorcee. Like recently divorced, but they all were like, should I just go get the wedding band right now? No, no, don't. It's not even a funny joke. And I have a decent sense of humor. Yeah, not for me. Uh, seems similar to love bombing. What is love bombing, Akita? But yeah, it seems similar. Yeah, so Harmony says, yeah, so me and my partners. Who's going to bed? Uh, night night, Lin Jay. Sweet dreams. All the love. Everyone, go give Lin Jay a follow if you aren't already following her. She is one of my IRL BFFs. Uh, also a fellow food and drink streamer. Also a variety streamer. And like just one of the baddest bitches you'll ever meet. She's my queen. I love her. Uh, less immediate, but yeah, they often go together. Escalator is mostly about expectations. Uh, things should get deeper. Oh, yeah. Funny thing is, I have made it very clear. Like you're like. We're just, we're just dating. We're just getting to know each other, starting off as friends, seeing where it's going. Like, I don't expect you to meet my kids. I don't expect you to meet my parents. Like, don't meet my friends. Like, we're, we're just getting to know each other. Yeah, fuck me. All of them are meeting my kids. All of them are meeting my friends. And one of them has already met my parents. They're just so laid back and chill that it just happens to like, yeah, Alaska went to my parents' house to help them. They needed a really, really strong person to help move some really big fucking heavy stuff placed in a very precarious place. And he's like, oh, sure. And so he just came over to their house and like moved their stuff around for them. And my parents absolutely adored him. Yeah. If anyone doesn't know, my parents are my two lesbian moms and Mama Anne like almost like just ran her finger right up his beard because she has a thing for guys with beards. Lesbian love guys with beards. And yeah, they fucking adore him. So they invited him to dinner. So that's what's going on now. Oh, and now all of them are going to meet Supper Club. And they're on stream meeting you guys. I don't know how it went from having no boyfriends to having like, I'm not calling them boyfriends, but you get the gist of it. It was like supposed to be really casual and there was not supposed to be nothing serious. And now somehow instead of having zero serious, I have three plus one. That was unintentional. But still, I'm going with... Nice and slow. Uh, Eat it, Dads. Yes, that is the app I was referring to. It is terrifying if you're a single woman. Harmony says, I need therapy. I also need to see a psychologist. Yeah, both of those are great. I highly recommend both of them. Oh, yeah, passes, Linja. I mean, I would love to spend more time with you, but I'm not going to be attached immediately. Thank you. Yeah, Eat it, Dads, and uh, Akita. Oh, that is what I've said to everyone. It's just like, I want to spend more time with you. I enjoy your company. You make me very happy. That being said, I'm not going to like give up. I'm, I'm very selfish at this point. I will fully admit it. And I've told them this too. Like I'm going to focus on me, my kids, my life, my family, my friends, and I will include you as much as I can. And then the rest of that is grown over time with trust and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So I just, I didn't expect them all to be so amazing. And so now things are just happening. Yeah. I think all of them have met my kids except for Warhammer is the only one who hasn't met my kids. Um, yeah. And I think, I don't, I don't know. I'm pretty sure my parents are going to fucking love cat guy. Holy shit. They're going to love him so much. And that's probably coming up in the near future too. Fuck me. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, yep. Field is probably the scary one you mentioned. Yes. Field is terrifying. If you were a single female, they will go nuts on you. I think like 90% of the people on there are dudes, creepy dudes. Uh, I'm so glad that I was, I was trying to picture an escalator in a store. Lols. Uh, I've also, okay. So Vendetta says, yeah, I've also gotten a lot better at the boundary thing after getting out of the 13 year relationship time to stop being pleasing uh, when it's hurting you more like, uh, talking from my experience. It was hard lesson learned, but the peace of mind is amazing. Yes. That's the other thing I'm hard lesson learned. I'm a people pleaser. I always have been a people pleaser. So for me to advocate for boundaries and advocate for like, doing something that I, or yeah, like not doing something because even though I know it would make you really happy, I just, I don't want to do it. Like I've actually called off a date just cause I wasn't feeling like going on it, which is not my usual thing. Like I'm usually like, no, we even did that with radio guy. I kept trying to convince myself to go on this date that I didn't want to go on and chat like Kathy. It's very clear. You don't want to go on the date. And it's like, Oh, huh, good point. I'm getting better. 
Yep, yep, yep. Cutie mode. Uh, good. I'm glad things are going well and that you're happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Made a lot of new friends. 